Good morning. So I'm going to do another video here. I just did the video about Bermuda, real mowing Bermuda. And now we're going to flip the opposite. I'm in my backyard and my backyard is full of fescue. So pros and cons of having a fescue lawn in North Georgia. So I'm in North Georgia. I'm in Canton, Georgia, which is about 40 miles north of Atlanta. And I have an affinity to fescue I grew up with it. So our house that I grew up with in, uh, I grew up in Powder Springs, Georgia, which is west of Atlanta. Um, grew up in Powder Springs, Georgia, and we always had a fescue yard. A lot of neighbors had Bermuda, but we had fescue. My dad liked fescue. And from probably when I was about 10 years old, I started maintaining it. My dad started making me mow the grass. I would help him do the aeration every year. I would help him oversee the yard every year and I would maintain the fescue. So I've always had like a special place in my heart for fescue, but it is a, <laughs> it is a love-hate relationship because growing fescue in Georgia is a little difficult. Right now, I'm making this video on May 16th, 2024. The fescue looks awesome, right? It is like from middle of March through about June, the fescue looks amazing right? Like it is just top notch. But then when it starts to get really, really hot here in Georgia and it gets really, really humid, if you have high sun places like here behind me, you can see I've got an old tree stump there. Um, I, I opted not to do that because I have some landscaping plans back here. Um, stay tuned in the future. I'm saving up some money for this, but we're going to be putting a, um, if you've ever followed the, um, the uh, aquascapes people, I'm gonna do a rec pond right here, like a swim pond right here. And then there will be a waterfall coming down this hill. See our, our screen and porch is right there. So we'll hear the waterfall going down the hill and it will spill into a giant rec pond right here where we can swim and it'll look beautiful and it's gonna cost a lot of money. So I'm saving up money for that. But anyways, that's what I want to do right here. So that's why I'm not doing anything with the stump because it's going to get dug up one day whenever we do. There was a big, massive pine tree here. When we cleared this lot out, we opted to just, um, actually we cut that one down and just forestry mulched it up because this was all past where we were grading. Anyways, um, fescue in Georgia. So like I said, come June, when it starts to get hot, it looks like crap. It's going to thin out. Some of it's going to go into dormancy. You're going to get brown patch despite your best efforts. You're going to get brown patch in your fescue. I don't have any irrigation back here. You have to play a game with fescue, with irrigation. Because if you irrigate it too much, you're going to get brown patch. And if you don't irrigate it enough, you're going to get brown patch. And if you irrigate it just right, you're still going to get some brown patch. Like, this just the reality of fescue. So you're going to have to, as much as I hate using chemicals, and by the way, if you didn't watch my other video, I used to have my turf and ornamental care license. I used to spray lawns. Um, I sold that business about 10 years ago. My license lapsed about five years ago because they're good for like five years at a time. I just let it lapse because I got out of that business. I'm in the real estate investment business now. I flip houses for a living. For those of you who don't watch my channel and know what I do, I flip houses for a living. I do rental properties, seller financing properties, all the above, creative deals, uh, development. Actually, this was my first development deal. I bought all of this, including the house next to me here and all this land and down the street that way, about 11 acres, split it up, did a development. That was my first development deal that I did. Um, but anyways, I still love grass. I still love landscaping. I still love being outside. I come out here every morning. My morning routine is to drink my coffee, and walk around and pull weeds and do my morning phone calls with my team and make sure we're all squared away, get all the deals squared away for the day or whatever. That's what I do every morning and I maintain my own yard. So I have the time and the freedom to maintain my own yard. But so fescue in Georgia, let's get back on topic. I'm super ADD. If you haven't noticed, I'll jump all over the place. Um, it's going to look like crap and you just have to learn to deal with that. But in the fall and in the spring from like middle of March, when it comes out of dormancy until like beginning of June, the fescue looks awesome. And what I like about it is that just around the time that this is starting to sort of decline, 
the Bermuda in the front is starting to pop. So I get this balance where I get a year, like a nice yard year round. Like in the winter time, I get to look in the backyard. It's nice and green and beautiful and it's all brown in the front because that's all dormant. And in the backyard, it looks awesome, right? If you're doing fescue in Georgia, you have to aerate and overseed every year. Like no question, you have to aerate and overseed every year. I like to aerate and overseed fescue around the end of September. Um, like last week, usually the last, it, you have to look at the weather, but usually the best window is the last week of September to aerate and overseed. By the way, I just established all of this grass. You can go check back some of my videos, um, my older videos. This was all established in September of 2022. So this, this yard is only two years old. And look how good it looks. It looks awesome. I mean, this is kind of the crappy part here. Um, this is a little bit thinner and that's, there's a lot of compaction right there. We had a lot of equipment running in and out there. I'm working on that area, top dressing it a little bit and we'll get the compaction out of there. It'll look better eventually. Um, but the, um, we established all this from nothing in September, 2022. Check out some of my old videos. Uh, you can see where I forestry mulch. Basically the county only let us clear to here. And then once we moved in, we cleared all the way down to the creek and cleared all that out. And then I, I graded it out and seeded it in with grass, kind of all the way down to the creek. Uh, the creek's right down there, kind of winds along this back here, down in this gully here, the creek is in there. So um, that's my neighbor's house right there. Put in a bunch of arborvitaes. Those are uh, emerald greens. So they'll get about 20 feet tall, put in 30 of those. So eventually they'll block up and we'll have a nice hedge all the way down. And then I do plan on, I'm trying to get my neighbor to take down this weird looking hickory tree right here. It's like super scrangly looking. And I'd love to put like some uh, like Hinoki cypress trees right here in this corner. I think they have some cool texture and color to them. Um, but we would need to, when we have the machine out here, we need to dig up that massive stump right there. That's from a white oak. Uh, we'll have to dig that up. And I think we can plant some Hinoki cypress, but I've got like, I mean, that's a huge tulip poplar tree. Uh, we, my wife loves the mimosa trees, although they are technically invasive. Uh, we kept this big mimosa here because um, it has the pretty flowers in the summertime. Um, and then there's a tulip poplar there. There's a white oak here. Our, our whole property is mostly red, white, red oaks, white oaks, and tulip poplars um, all over. I have a, a love-hate relationship with the tulip poplars because they drop all those little twirly things and, and they clog up my gutters. <laughs> so... But uh, anyways, the fescue is looking great. I haven't mowed this. Today is Thursday. So Saturday, it's been five days since I mowed this last. Um, it needs to be mowed again. I'll probably mow it again on Saturday. I mow it once a week. Um, and I cut this at, right now I'm at three and a half inches with a, I use a 48 inch uh, commercial walk behind. You can see the slope here. I mean, we're on a de pretty decent slope. So I use a commercial walk behind mower because if you've ever used a commercial mower, especially a walk behinds, they're like billy goats on a slope, man. They can cut a steep slope with no problem versus a zero turn. You do run some risk of spinning out and sliding and flipping over. I mean, some guys say they can do it better. I just prefer a walk behind with a sulky. I guess I'm just old school like that. Um, but anyways, I cut this with a 48 inch walk behind and I always double cut. In my opinion, if you've got fescue, you should always double cut fescue. Cut it in opposite directions. Um, I can mow pretty fast with my walk behind. I mean, I'm at full speed on this thing. Um, and, and so when I double cut it, it leaves a nice, good, clean cut. Um, and then, like I said, you want to aerate and overseed every year. It's end of September. Uh, my preferred choice of seed, which I'm speaking to Georgia here. I like Lesco transition blend, uh, tall fescue seed. I, you can buy it from Site One Landscape Supply. Once upon a time, it was Lesco, and then John Deere Landscapes bought them, and then Site One bought John Deere. But anyways, you can go to a Site One Landscape Supply place. I like Lesco Transition Blend Seed. It's always been my favorite seed. It has very, very, very little uh, weed content in it compared to some of the stuff you buy at the big box stores. Uh, generally has a little bit more weeds in it. Uh, one year, I did have a bad batch of Lesco seed and i got a bunch of rye in it um but the rye dies out um but I, I did get some rye grass 
in that this was like one year it was back it's probably been six years ago now at my old house i had fescue in my backyard there i did get one bad batch that had some clumps of rye in it um but overall this uh this is two years worth of um of no actually yeah yeah two years worth of this is two seedings here so i did the original seeding check out the other videos we came in and we graded all this out and then we harley raked everything with a harley rake on a skid steer got everything nice and smooth we had really really good topsoil back here so we moved all that topsoil around spread it around harley raked it in got all the roots and the rocks and everything spread out and got it nice and smooth and then I got lucky because we had no torrential rainstorms for like two weeks. So I was able to water all this in and keep it watered every single day and get that seed to take perfectly on the slope. And I didn't get any washout, which is not always the case. Um, I didn't have to, I didn't straw any of this at all. I literally just seed right on the dirt and then I spread the seed. And then I came around with a drag after I spread the seed and kind of worked that seed into the top layer of soil and then watered the crap out of it and then came as it started to germinate, I came back and hand seeded some of the thinner spots by hand. And then this last fall, I did the same thing. I aerated and overseeded it again, and then came around and I just sort of hand seed some of the thinner patches, uh, especially over there. That gets a lot of shade over there. Fescue does grow a little bit better in shade than Bermuda, which is why I have it back here. I just don't have enough sun back here to grow Bermuda in the backyard. So that's why I don't have Bermuda. Zoysia would do good back here. I do like Zoysia, um, but Zoysia is expensive. Um, and, you know, I seeded this whole thing, including... Uh, there's 12,000 square feet of turf, 12,000 square feet of uh, fescue back here. And when I graded it all out, I think all in I spent... Uh, when I first established it, I spent 1,200 bucks to seed all this in. And then last year when I reseeded again, I probably spent $200, right, in seed and fertilizer and uh, I lime this uh, every year too um, you want to do soil tests to make sure but typically in Georgia you you pretty much in most yards you're going to need lime for the most part at least one application of dolomitic limestone uh, once a year just because of our soil pH here uh, but I lime this and then like I said the topsoil back here was really really good um, and then I aerate it my guy I mentioned in my Bermuda video aerated this back in September and he ran over it um, and then in the trouble areas which is over there and right behind me here i had him run over it like three times i mean he plugged the crap out of it and really because these were really a lot of sun a lot of compaction and over there there was a lot of compaction over there and he really ran over it just chewed up the turf really really good plugged a lot of holes in it and we got some good germination there back in the fall so um in terms of fertilization of fescue, um, you don't want to fertilize fescue past, uh, I think May. I have somebody treating this right now, but I'm going to take it back over. You typically don't want to fertilize fescue past like May. So I think the last fertilization here is uh, this week. I think he's coming out this week to do that. Um, and then you don't want to put any nitrogen on it the rest of the year because it's going to promote brown patch. Uh, if you put too much nitrogen on this and it gets too much water, you're going to get brown patch. Um, and you just don't want to do that. Um, I had brown patch right in here really bad last year. It just, it happens guys. Like no matter how much you try, you're going to get brown patch and fescue. It's just, it's going to happen. I'm sorry. Like I hate to break bad news to you. But the reality is, is you can use fungicides. Um, I try to avoid using fungicides if at all possible. Um, and then I just, you know, just aerate and reseed next year and the, the areas will recover and it'll look great again. Um, like I mentioned earlier, I like the difference between having the green in the front and then, you know, you get two seasons out of grass, like you have green grass year round. Um, in terms of mowing the fescue, um, like I said, I'm mowing this at three and a half right now. When I start in the spring, I'm mowing it at three inches tall. And then I've recently worked up to three and a half. And then by the end of the season, I'll be up usually June and July. I'm at like four inches. Um, you do want fescue to grow tall, right? Most cool season grasses, you want them to be taller uh, than Bermuda, which I bow Bermuda in the front at three quarters of an inch tall, right? So this back here, I grow much taller. Um, and that way it gets thicker and it shades the roots out. It's a different style. It's a, this is a clumping grass versus a spreading grass in Bermuda in the front. So that's how I do this. 
Um, it is a nice looking grass right now, right? Look at the stripes and everything, it looks great. Um, but if you're planning on growing it, just understand it's gonna be a love-hate relationship, uh, especially growing it in Georgia where I live. It just, <laughs> come June or July and August, it just looks like crap, it looks terrible. And you're just gonna have to deal with that. But remember, come September when you aerate and you overseed again by October, it's gonna green back up and all the new grass is gonna grow and it's gonna look really, really good again through about November. And then usually when it starts to like really, really freeze around Thanksgiving-ish, it's gonna go into dormancy for the winter and it's gonna be this like sort of splotchy, dark, dark green color throughout the winter, not really grow at all. And then middle of March, it's gonna come back out of dormancy and it's gonna start growing like crazy and it's gonna get super, super thick and it's gonna look awesome. So um, that's my uh, opinion on fescue in Georgia. Um, there are some feeding schedules online. You can search them, especially UGA and Auburn uh, University have some really good um, articles about growing different kinds of grasses uh, in the south, growing fescue, growing Bermuda, what your feeding schedule should be like, all the different chemicals you should use and all that stuff. I highly suggest you read some of that stuff and then get some soil tests done at your local county extension office. I know I rambled again. I always ramble on videos, but uh, you know, Thanks for checking it out. We'll talk to you later, guys. Bye.